world of finite resources. Yet, the dominant economic practice is the exploitative take, make, dispose paradigm. According to research, by 2050 the globe should be able to sustain the needs of 9 billion people. By extension, three times more raw materials will be required to sustain this population, resulting in a 70% increase in food, feed and fibre. Currently, in the European Union alone, 15 tonnes of raw materials are required per capita per year. One third of this enormous consumption ends up as waste, most of which goes to landfill. So why should we be concerned here in Peterborough? Currently, there are 197,000 people living in Peterborough who collectively contribute to a GVA of £5.4 billion. Around 6,900 businesses within the city contribute to this thriving economy. At present, our city is not exploiting its resource potential to its maximum utilisation. The current picture presents a situation whereby the majority of waste is classed as residual. Moreover, the city currently depends heavily upon finite resources. Only 10% of the energy provided to the city derives from renewable energy sources. Given that by 2050, the population of Peterborough is expected to reach 224,000, the pressure upon these finite resources will become even tighter. So, how are we going to react to this? Together, we need to take action and decide on how we would like our city to perform by 2050. Should we continue on the linear take-make-dispose pathway, or should we try creating and profiting from new opportunities, revalorizing resources and minimizing raw resource uptake, the circular economy? Let us take a look at how these scenarios may present themselves in our city. Peterborough has an array of important sectors which contribute to the development of the city. Together, these industries have a large influence on the resource use within Peterborough. Take these two businesses for example, one being a typical food and beverage company within the manufacturing industry, the other an office within the service sector. Let us take a closer look at the typical resource flows within their operations. At the moment, following a linear path, Fossil fuels make up the largest proportion of energy supply to power their operations. Furthermore, inefficiencies within internal operations increase resource demand. Not only do these companies use a copious amount of raw materials in their operations, they also use a large quantity of fresh water. Approximately one third of this is discharged as waste into the sewage system. Wastewater is not the only waste stream of concern. Their operations discard other valuable resources in the form of waste some of which end up in landfill, others recycled or incinerated. Of course, these waste resources must be transported. Furthermore, the examples used here heavily depend upon a global transportation network. The movement of these materials are inevitable, however there is potential to improve efficiency of these processes. Assuming that all of the small to large businesses in the manufacturing and service sectors operate in the same way as these examples, let us see the total impact of these sectors at present. If this trend continues unabated, there will be insufficient raw material available for business use. As a consequence, this will affect raw material supply, resulting in increased cost of production. Inevitably, this will raise the price of goods and lower the economic productivity of our city. Further to this, the diminished supply of raw material will result in the closure of businesses directly impacting unemployment rate. If we continue on this path, increasing unemployment will lower disposable income and depress the economic growth of our city. But this is only for two sectors. Just imagine if this was applied to every sector. Surely we cannot continue in this way. Now, rewind back to the same two companies, but this time, let's see how they would look when a circular model is applied.
in the journey to visualise how the manufacturing company could reach full circularity by 2050. Joining Share Peterbrook can help the company quickly and easily engage with the community to ensure the business's unwanted resources are utilised. For example, the company may find a business looking to make use of one of their waste streams. Their wastewater could be the perfect resource for a company close by. The company redesigns their food and beverage packaging to reduce the quantity of material, to incorporate recycled plastics and to integrate biodegradable materials. These steps will reduce residual waste, greenhouse gas emissions and raw material depletion. The company collaborates with surrounding businesses to engage with one waste management company. This will increase the efficiency of waste collection and reduce costs collectively. Progressively, this company will source its products from the closest possible local sources. This will reduce transport emissions and traffic congestion, while improving the local economy. Feasible technological innovations will make it possible for the business to capture the excess heat from industrial processes and reuse this within the facility. Alternatively, the excess heat can be utilised along with that from the surrounding facilities to collectively heat a greenhouse. In this ideal future, the company has redefined its business model to engage with social demands and environmental pressures. The company has decided to eliminate their plastic packaging by setting refilling points within retailers. Here, consumers have chosen the most suitable service package for their needs and they refill their own bottles with their favourite beverage. And this is just one example of how a single food and beverage company could become fully circular by 2050. So, what happens when the manufacturing company is swapped for a service sector company? The canteen within this service company conveniently store their waste coffee grounds in a caddy which is collected by a coffee waste recycling company. On average, the company reduces their CO2 emissions by 240 kilograms. External businesses provide the company with their office equipment and appliances as a service. For example, the company pays for the service of providing lighting to the office instead of purchasing the appliances themselves. In this case, the company transfers the cost of replacing the materials to the servitization business. By 2050, the business has achieved full circularity through closing all the loops within energy, transport and waste. For example, the company maximises the efficiency of the building, as a result, it is feasible for them to generate their own energy from renewable sources. So now we have seen an example of how both a manufacturing and service company could become fully circular by 2050. Understand that these solutions are not the only ones. There are many innovative solutions that should be tailored to the specific needs of individual companies. If every company within Peterborough was to come up with their own roadmap to achieve full circularity by 2050, huge impacts could be made. Together, by 2050, we could dramatically reduce the amount of resources required by the city. Creating a circular city would bring new business opportunities, generating new employment prospects across all sectors. Overall, the city could celebrate huge economic prosperity from achieving full circularity. The future of our city is in your hands. Together we can achieve these outcomes and possibly even more. So, what are we waiting for?